Hello and welcome to Brooks TV. I'm Hannah and I'm Naomi. Can't believe it is the last episode of the season. I know, and my very last episode, yes. which uh, I have to say does bring a tear to the eye because yeah. I've really enjoyed being part of Brooks TV. Um, I remember my first time I ever came, I was slightly hesitant about it. Yep. But if any of you are thinking about getting involved, it's so much fun. It's such a great way to see what might go on in the industry. So you should definitely get involved. I really encourage you to. Yeah, definitely. And we've had a great season. Yeah. Thanks for all your support. Yes, thank you to everybody who got involved. Now, I am sure you have heard all about the budget cuts that are going to affect the youth centres all around the UK. Yes, I think it's a pity that we're going to lose such brilliant help from people who care so much about today's young people. Well, despite the constant protests against the cuts, the government has finally made its decision. Emma had a look at the final attempt to change the council's mind. The Oxford County Council on Tuesday 19th April agreed to cut funding for 13 of the county's 34 youth centres. The Conservative-controlled County Council said it needed to restructure the service to help it make financial savings of £17 million by 2015 and plans on replacing the cut youth centres with seven hubs which will help young people who have specific difficulties but there will be no funding for youth work the county hopes that big society youth work volunteers will step in to fill the gaps in the future, but can volunteers take on the work of trained professional workers? Well, this county council is conservative-led, and they've decided that they're going to carry those cuts through with glee, actually. It looks to me like they're actually enjoying it. And what they're doing is they're taking four million off one service, the youth service. So all youth work is going to go. I came along today because I'm a school teacher and the cutting of youth work across Oxfordshire is going to have a really negative impact both on schools and on the children that we teach in schools. Save All UK Youth Centres and Oxford Save Our Service put together a big society outside County Hall with young people sitting in cardboard boxes asking for donations and volunteers. They're demonstrating because they're very, very unhappy. The cuts are going to affect thousands of young people and they're going to mean that there's no safe space where young people can go um, to hang out with their friends, learn new skills and be supported by professional youth workers. Um, I guess like we'll have nowhere to go and um, it'll just be we'll, be, we'll end up hanging about on the streets um, doing stuff. Uh, I'm Councillor Larry Sanders, Green Party Council for East Oxford, and I'm here to look at this l latest stage in the destruction of the youth service. It's a very sad day for Oxfordshire, sad day for the young people, a sad day for all of us. The turnout was not as impressive as hoped, but a message was sent with the hopes of changing the County Council's mind. This is Emma Kashemir reporting for Books TV. Now then, we've all heard of those big West End shows such as Spamalot, Annie and the Horrible Histories. No longer do you have to travel all the way to London to enjoy them. Just pop over to our neighbours in Aylesbury. Yes, the new Waterside Theatre in Aylesbury has just opened and is attracting many local av avid theatre fans. Our reporter Caroline Cunningham Oaks went to take a look. The brand new Waterside Theatre in Aylesbury is expected to attract up to 300,000 visitors a year. It is now one of the region's leading live entertainment venues, showcasing the best West End and touring productions from across the UK each and every year. I was very intrigued by the theatre and all it has to offer. I caught up with Becky Martin, who told me more. We've only been open since October, beginning of October, so around six months. Um, and it was a vision of the council, Aylesbury Vale District Council, to um, create a new entertainment centre for Aylesbury and to kind of really put Aylesbury on the map. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a massive, massive investment into the arts to build a venue like this of its size, um, which has never, never been in this area before. Um, so we're a 1,200-ish seated venue. Um, but we have the capability, um, it's a very flexible venue for use on various different kinds of art forms. The West End comes to Aylesbury. You can see a variety of shows, from
from The Horrible Histories and the Awful Egyptians to Annie and to Monty Python's Spamalot, just to name but a few. This week we've got Spamalot in with Phil Jupitus and J.D. Pranger and Todd Carty and um, that's doing phenomenally well. We're getting a huge amount of word of mouth in the town and we're getting a lot of walk-up trade when people are just turning up to buy tickets on the night, which is, is brilliant. The theatre is a well-needed venue for this town. It's nice to know that I can watch a West End show without having to pay the odds to go to London to see one. This is Caroline Cunningham Oaks for Brooks TV. Well, that theatre looks impressive. I might have to buy myself a ticket and pop over to see a show. I hope Billy, Billy Elliot comes to the theatre, so we keep meaning to see it, but I just don't have the time to pop to London. It's a good one to watch. It's one of my favourites. Mm. Now, from theatre to art, that brings us nicely onto the Chinese exhibition. During the Cultural Revolution, art was a significant political tool and some amazing images were produced. Shingo went to the Ashmolean Inn to check it out. The Ashmolean Museum is a great place to visit, even if you are not a talented historian or an artist. The current exhibition held in the museum is a Chinese exhibition, where they show the propaganda arts of the 1970s. I have interviewed Tom Joet to ask more about the exhibition. Yeah, it's an interesting exhibition. Obviously, Mao's quite a uh, interesting character that divides opinion and um, a very important 20th century figure in history. Uh, if I had to say what I like about them, probably the uh, importance of them historically. It really does show you know, how a, um, a leader can really you know, grab a nation and turn them into his favour propaganda-wise. The majority of the visitors seem pleased with the exhibition. It's a lovely exhibition. We were not expecting to, to find something relating to China in the um, Ashmolean from this period. So we were very pleased to, to, to find that there were these posters on display. Quite spectacular ones too. I enjoyed this very much. It's, it's a nice uh, compact size of exhibition so it's, it's easy to get around it and go back to the first things again and review them. It's really from, they get them from there. They're the exact posters from that time. Um, they sort of show exactly what was what they wanted to people to think and feel with the posters. The exhibition is going to be held until the 3rd of July. Do not miss this opportunity to pay a visit. This is Shingo Nakajima for Brooks TV. Well, that looks fascinating. I'm going to have to go and check it out. Now, Hannah, you live in Cowley, right? What's it like living down there? Yeah, I really like living in Cowley, actually. There's loads of restaurants and bars, mm -hmm. and you're always bumping into somebody from uni. That so must be nice. Yeah, it's really great. However, if you go up the hill towards Temple Cowley, it gets a little bit, goes a little bit downhill. It's a little bit grim. And they're trying to do something about that, I believe. And um, did you catch the I Cowley event the other day? No, I didn't. Well, Mike went, and here's what he got up to. The grey and weathered face of Hockmore Tower Flats in Cowley was transformed into a work of art last weekend in celebration of the local community as part of the I Cowley project. Dominating the Cowley skyline, Hockmore Tower Flats was the perfect location for the massive outdoor projection event. I spoke to organisers at the Arc Tea Centre about the motivation behind the project. I Cowley was a project that we started to develop several years ago now. We were quite interested in using projection to change the way people looked at their environment. By having a lot of photos of individuals, you get an idea of a community as a whole. And there's a big history of uh, people being photographed and painted with their personal objects. As, uh, so to bring that kind of history to the uh, people of Cowley it seemed like a really nice thing to do. It's people's stories that matter and the building of relationships between people and enabling people to talk about who they are and what motivates them. and why they're here and all of those sort of things. It just brings, it brings a richness to a community if you can enable people to do that. 
Labour MP Andrew Smith attended the event and I took the opportunity to ask him if he thought that art and creativity were still important career paths for students. Frankly everybody's got to do the best they can to make the most of their potential and if that's in arts and in projecting things great but you know if it's in manufacturing motor cars or developing new chemicals or repairing bicycles whatever it is you know everyone's got to find their own way what I do think is wonderful is to see where students have been to Brooks or Oxford University and are able to put something back into the local community. Artist and former Brooks student Neil C Smith took responsibility for the projection and presentation of the images collected for the project. I asked him if he felt his experience at Brooks prepared him for his work as a professional artist. About halfway through my MA at Brooks, um, I really started getting into looking at ways of doing self-generating work. The MA got me to focus a lot on what I wanted to do, and you know, it's something that there's a thread of work that then I've been working with and developing for ten years. But um, whether it actually prepared me for the real world or not is a different matter. <laughs> By 8 o'clock on Friday night, a good-sized crowd of onlookers had gathered. I found out what some of them thought of the event. I do, I do quite like it. It's a good idea, you know. It's quite affirmative, I think, for people to, to see their um, people they know or their relatives up on, on, you know, projected up really big like that. It's very good. It's very nice. The event ran over two nights and it seemed to have a positive impact on both the artists and community members involved with the project. For more information about the iCowley project, visit www.icowley.info. I'm Mike Weston for Brooks TV. Well, that has certainly brightened up the place. I'm afraid that's it for this half, but as we've already mentioned, this is our last episode, so we want to take this opportunity to invite any of you budding presenters, or if you prefer, behind the scenes, to sign up for the Society next year. Email brookstv at brooks.ac.uk. There are many positions still to be filled, including President. And don't forget, you can catch up on any of the episodes you've missed from this year on btv.brooks.ac.uk. And a huge thank you to anyone who has been involved. Make sure you come along to the wrap party. Thanks for watching and see you after the break. Goodbye! Bye.